I don't know how much battery power I have left, but let's keep going until we die, Chavez Slovakia. The battery. The battery dies. Craziest facts about the Middle Ages. I'm pretty sure up. Up. Oh, we're getting short again. God damn it. <sighs> Craziest facts about the Middle Ages. Uh, it's by Origin Explained. We haven't been here for a while, so let's get into it. Play. From bizarre ways for cleaning wounds to partying in the cemetery, here are 10 things you wouldn't believe about the Middle Ages. Oh, I'll believe it. You can't make me not believe it. Number 10. Pointy shoes were all the rage. Today, if you decided to wear long, pointed shoes, you might look a little eccentric, to say the least. Dear, have you seen hipsters, bro? They wear everything. Times, pointy shoes were all the rage. Forget Adidas. If you wanted to look cool in the 14th and 15th century, you would wear Krakow's, named <laughs> after the former Polish capital of Krakow. That cannot be good These for your feet. These shoes might have been fashionable, but they were not practical. Yeah. They were very pointed and elongated, making it a little ridiculous to just walk around. And if you stood too close to someone, they would ruin your nice leather, or you could poke someone in the shin. There's even a record of people not being able to kneel in prayer because of them. The whole thing went so far that in 1368, Charles V of France banned the manufacturing of pointy shoes in Paris. He banned but it? Fashion is fashion, and Krakow's dominated European courts for decades to come. Also, these shoes were expensive. You had to find a talented shoemaker and use only the best quality materials. Only the elite were brave enough to wear them. The tips were stuffed with moss and some kind of overshoe for support. The richer you were, the more extreme and lengthy the tip. Size mattered. Except in battle, because no one could walk around freely or carry weapons. That's they hung so on for goofy. a while, but finally, common sense prevailed. Number nine, that is so urine goofy. as an antiseptic. Well, that's this medical not where I practice, expected this to go. You call it that, wasn't used all the time, but there is a lot of evidence that using urine as a form of antiseptic was common in medieval times. And it wasn't done only among the commoners or the simple folk. It was actually a part of royal medical practice. Huh. Doctors could tell what was wrong with people just by looking at their urine. And during the Middle Ages, it became a solid tool for doctors, providing them with all kinds of information. There is also a lot of documentation advising people to treat ulcers, bites, and stings with urine, even uh. to fight the plague. Thomas Vickery, who was the so surgeon desperate. of King Henry VIII, the one with the six wives, actually advised for all battle wounds to be washed with urine to clean them up and prevent an infection. While this was technically after the Middle Ages, the information all came from their past experience. In those days, urine was the most sterile thing around because even the water was a little iffy. Even the Aztecs are said to have used urine to disinfect wounds. Okay, that but makes sense don't then. don't get any ideas because now, while you could use it to flush out your wound in a pinch, there are much, much better you know, alternatives. Like iodine? After all, there Please? are advantages to not living in the Middle Ages anymore. And now for number eight. But first, number eight. Football was banned in England. Who would have thought that the country which popularized this sport was you the one that You mean American made... football with the Super Bowl. Just kidding, just kidding. But it's true. <laughs> At one point, playing football wasn't allowed in England. You can imagine that medieval times were completely different from what we know today. And this goes for playing football as well. In those days, football was played everywhere without any strict regulations and it was gruesome and violent. Oh. It's also known as mob football, as it literally involved ah. a mob of people. This was played between neighboring towns and villages. The number of opposing players wasn't strictly defined, and Got the ball it. was in fact an inflated pig splatter. That's the true. rule was yep. no murder, but everything else was pretty much allowed. So you just fucking Imagine beat the shit out of each other? With everyone punching and screaming at that each other in front of your house. That would be great. Not a pretty sight, I can tell you that. It would be the way more entertaining. so out of hand that King Edward II decided to ban football in 1314. In the following centuries, more than 20 different bans were imposed. As it turned out, no ban could stop the English from enjoying football. The only difference today is that now we also have rugby for those of you who prefer a little more contact sport. Number seven. It just showed American football and then said rugby. I know you guys no got fork. jokes. I know you Although got Although the jokes. fork was invented in ancient times, this cutlery item was not used extensively throughout the Middle Ages. It's not like no one knew about its existence, mm, but it wasn't all that popular. However, spoons and knives were another thing entirely. Everyone loved those. The fork just didn't catch on. Why not? Well, there are multiple theories about this, but the general idea is that for some reason, the fork was considered strange and uncivilized. 
It looked okay. barbaric and reminded people of the devil's pitchfork. Yeah, the I could see that. The proper way to eat was to pick up things with your fingers, while the fork was a sign of pure savagery. <laughs> Medieval Europe simply detested the idea of using forks during meals. The music while he's cutting that bread is savagery. hysterical. Medieval like, Europe look. simply detested the idea of using <laughs> forks during meals. In the 11th century, a Venetian nobleman married a Byzantine princess, and during their wedding feast, the princess shocked everyone by using a fork. How dare she? The local clergy said that God had already provided us with our fingers, so using an artificial fork was actually offensive. God, they're so weird. It took so a few weird. hundred years, but eventually everyone started to realize how practical it was, and the fork became <laughs> part like, of everyday I'm sure life. God is fine with us unlike using the forks. pointy shoes. Number six. Cemeteries were lively places. That is this true. This is the last place you would associate with fun and games. Not really, turned, because before they didn't have a lot of parks, so those were out very popular. Turns times, the cemeteries were pretty different places. They were more than places to bury your dead. Yeah. They were actually full of social activity. Many of the important town or village events took place in cemeteries. For example, things such as elections, sermons, public debates, mm -hmm. trials, and even plays were conducted in cemeteries, or right next to them. At night, they became the place of business for women of the night, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea. Philippe Please tell Ares me. claims that medieval cemeteries were places of trade and commerce because they belonged to the church and were thus exempt from taxation. Clever, huh? This is why many small business owners didn't shy away from conducting their activities in That's these places. That's pretty cool, too. Imagine a world where the best place to do business is the local cemetery. Crazy, right? Number five, cruentation. What the heck is that? This is definitely yeah. one of the weirdest medieval beliefs. It was actually a method for proving that a suspected murderer was indeed guilty. Okay. The idea behind it was as follows. If you bring the body of a murdered person in front of their alleged murderer, the body will let off blood. Yep, that's the whole concept. Wow. If it was difficult to prove that someone was guilty of murder, the victim's corpse was brought to them and they were ordered to put their hands on the corpse. Oh if my the corpse gosh. Bled, or if there were any other unusual signs, it meant that the accused was guilty. That is so this silly. This method was a part of a group of laws called the Germanic Laws used in the Middle Ages, and it was used in countries such as Germany, Poland, and Bohemia, present-day Czech Republic. In Germany, it was used as a legitimate legal method until the mid-18th century. King James of England foolish. also approved of this method as a legitimate way to condemn the murderer. I know it's dumb to call things that happen in the Middle Ages foolish, but I'm just saying, man. Just some things just get me, dude. After the Protestant Reformation, things slowly started to change. Yeah, In countries please. such as Denmark and Norway, cruentation was seen as unwarranted from a legal standpoint, and a lot of priests even forbade its use. Which, good thing, because otherwise, we would all be in trouble. <laughs> Number four, no peasants. Contrary to popular belief, peasants as such actually didn't exist in medieval times. When we now think of a peasant, often people imagine a person living off the land in a tiny little house with a large family and a bunch of domestic animals. Kinda. But in the Middle Ages, the social class system was completely different, and peasants, as we view them today, were nowhere to be seen. At least they didn't identify themselves as such. The actual term peasant comes from French, but it didn't come around until the 15th century. Before that, everything was different. People working the land were divided into several distinct categories following a strict hierarchy. If we look at the famous English land survey from 1086, the Doomsday Book, the, the country folk can be divided book. into several categories, including freemen, serfs, and some slaves. But all of these people lived under feudal lords, and yeah. they had to pay rent. They did and indeed. And go to war for their lord if necessary. Hell yeah! Being a That's farmer could be less than from. idyllic, and living in the Middle Ages for the average Joe was pretty tough. Number so three, there were peasants. Three, becoming well, we think of peasants now as just somebody of a lower class, and you usually like social status-wise, like they can't afford something you can afford, so you call them a peasant. You know what I mean? Like just generally being broke. Um, I don't know. So I don't know what people normally. I don't know, I just think of what a peasant is, like, literally, which is why it's funny to me. Like, just like the masses, like, most people. So, I don't know, that's interesting. Hard. This might not come as a shock to many of you, but the joy of fighting in tournaments, the code of chivalry, and the glory of winning battles, all of it is now associated what? with medieval knights. However, the problem is that it wasn't at all easy to become a knight in the Who first place. Who thinks it would be first easy all, to be a to knight? you filthy rich to even attempt it. It's like becoming a professional athlete today. If you don't have solid financial backing, chances are you won't make it to the top. In order to become a knight, you had to be of noble origin and have enough money to afford a horse, 
armor and weapons. And people. And it wasn't petty cash, let me tell you. It was like owning a Ferrari today. Wealthy families would send off their boy to a noble's house around the age of eight. There he would become a page, which is basically a servant running errands right. for his noble. Then at the age of 14, Crocs. he would become Crocs. a squire, going Crocs. through rigorous training Crocs. until the age of Crocs. 21, Crocs. when he would finally Crocs. be dubbed a knight and Five. take the oath Crocs. of chivalry. Crocs. Being a knight was really Crocs. a great honor because Crocs. becoming one Crocs. was an ordeal. Crocs. Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm wearing Crocs, boy. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. Wearing Crocs, boy. My Crocs are gold. My pops is old. My Crocs got soul. My Crocs are bold. I go to church. Wearing Crocs. I'm always turned. Wearing Crocs. My Crocs are great. Your Crocs are lame. With my Crocs, I can cross a lake. Crocs, 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 Crocs. Crocs, 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 Crocs.